Hey everyone, it's Nerdy, and in this video and in a couple other videos, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. I am going to watch an entire franchise of films, and then I'm gonna rank them from which ones I liked uh, best to least, and also I'm going to watch their trailers, and I'm gonna tell you if all the good parts of the movie are in the trailers, but for the specific franchise I'm going to do if all of the kills are in the movie because we're doing a slasher film. So for this holiday season we are doing the franchise of Silent Night Deadly Night. <laughs> The movie starts off with a family, a mother, a father, a, a baby, and like a five-year-old boy. The five-year-old boy's name is Billy. And they're driving to a mental facility where grandpa lives. And grandpa is like catatonic. He is not responding to anything. And a doctor comes in and is like, I can talk to you about grandpa. So the parents leave Billy with grandpa thinking like he's catatonic, he's harmless, it's fine. It's not fine. <laughs> Grandpa uses his bonding time with his grandson to terrify the shit out of him and scare him away from Santa about how Santa's gonna punish you if you're bad. This scene was really good. Like, I was actually like, oh my god, that's fucking, that's terrifying. Parents come back, Grandpa pretends to be catatonic again, they leave, and on the way back to their home, Billy's asking questions about, like, Santa. He was asking questions about Santa before, too, but he was like, I don't want Santa to come because he's gonna punish me and I'm scared. And Mom's just like, you don't need to be afraid of Santa, it's fine. Then we're showing a man dressed in a Santa's outfit, buying something from a convenience store, and he robs the convenience store, and the clerk is like, not today, but then when he tries to draw his gun, the, the fake Santa kills him. 31 bucks. Merry fucking Christmas. Cut back to the family and the family is still driving in the car but they come across the Santa that just robbed that convenience store clerk and they pull over to help him but Billy's in the back seat saying the sanest shit like Keep going! Don't stop! The fake Santa pulls a gun on the family. The dad tries to reverse but the Santa shoots at him and kills him. Billy jumps out of the car and runs and hides. Then the fake Santa pulls the mom out of the car and rips her shirt off. Fake Santa kills mom by cutting her throat. Billy's hiding, the fake Santa's then like screaming like, where are you little bastard and all that other stuff. Billy's younger brother, whose name is Richard, is left in the car crying and then we are flash forward to the future where Billy and his brother are living in an orphanage run by nuns. So, you know, nothing bad's gonna happen there, surely. The kids are all drawing Christmas pictures and when Billy brings his to the front, he is immediately sent to Mother Superior, who will for now on be known as Mama Supps. We find out that Mama Supps is not about therapy for little Billy being traumatized by that horrific event. Instead, she's like, no, just stern discipline, that'll fix him. But Sister Margaret is like, I don't think so. I think we should get him help. And Mama Supps is like, um, bitch, are you the mother of Superior? So basically, Billy's not getting therapy because Mama Supps thinks that, you know, discipline is gonna be the way to go for a traumatized child. So Mama Supps is like stuck in her old dumbass ways where she thinks like, oh, proper discipline will cure him of his traumatization. And honestly, just kind of feels like people like her are the reason why we can't fucking progress as a fucking society. We must cling on to tradition. There can be no progress. Billy is in his room and Sister Margaret comes in and is like, hey, let's go play outside with the kids because I think that will be good for you even though he's not supposed to leave the room. That was his punishment. So when Billy leaves his room to go outside to play with the other kids, he hears some noises, and instead of minding his own business, he goes and follows them and catches one of the other nuns having sex with a guy. And, um, watching them have sex through the keyhole, and then Mama Supps comes in and, like, yanks him away from the keyhole and starts- goes in the room and starts beating these two that are just- sinning. Billy's outside playing with his brother when Mama Supps comes down and is like, Billy, what did you see? And he's like, nothing. And she's like, well, I told you not to leave the room, so you're in trouble anyways. So then the superior of mothers brings Billy to her office and whips him with a belt and then sends him to bed. She also like explains to him that punishment is good and it's like needed and like instills a deep psychological connection for him to know that if you have sex, you deserve to be violently 
only physically punished. That night is Christmas night, and Billy has horrible nightmares of the event of his parents being murdered by a man dressed as Santa. And then he wakes up and tries to run out of his room to like, I don't know where he's supposed to be going, he's probably just running in terror, but he's caught. And in response to this, Mother Superior <laughs> believes that it's a good thing to tie him to the bed now. I don't know if nuns should be allowed to raise kids, guys. And now it's Christmas Day, where the kids are getting presents. Yes, even Billy, even though he's been bad. It's revealed to us that, of course, he gets worse during the Christmas season, and Mother Superior knows this. She's talking with uh, Sister Margaret about it, because Sister Margaret actually cares about Billy. And Mama Supps is like, well, this year he's gonna be cured of it, and I'm gonna make sure he sits on Santa's lap and he's gonna be a good boy. He wasn't a good boy. He ends up punching the fake Santa in the face. And then he is catatonic in a corner. 10 years later, Sister Margaret gets him a job at a toy store, which just, you know he has an aversion to Christmas, like an intense psychological trauma. Why would you get him a job at a toy store? Like it's gonna be Christmas eventually. Sister Margaret is not as clever as she seems. And then there's a job working montage, which I didn't know was a thing. Like I knew there were like workout montages, like getting better at something montages, but just a straight like, I work here and I'm a good worker montage was just kind of really weird to see. And also the song behind it was fucking kind of weird to me. I don't know. The 80s, man. I wasn't there for it. And I won't need no more on the one side of the door. So when the montage is over, we find out that Billy's probably supervisor, Andy, is a piece of shit. Also that Billy himself is a soft boy and that he has a crush on his co-worker, Pamela. But guess what time of year it is now? It's fucking Christmas time and when the boss is rolling out the banner to show Merry Christmas and then in the middle of it is a Santa picture. It's a painting of Santa. Billy has a physical visceral reaction to it. Quit your job. He falls over this like basket of balls and um, the co-worker he has a crush on is like oh, oh are you okay I'll, I'll clean it up don't worry and then he goes to the back room and then it cuts to him fantasizing about having sex with her and then he gets like that's the noise of being stabbed by a Santa because punishment and you're bad and then he wakes up from his dream. It is confirmed that Billy thinks that if you have sex, you will be killed, which is an escalation from if you have sex, you will just be beaten with a like a belt. Mr. Sims, which is the head boss, if not owner of the toy store, Ira's Toys, where Billy works, he's talking with Miss Randall and she's being like stupidly cryptic about how they need somebody to fill in for their fake Santa. And they think it's a good idea that Billy be the fake Santa. Can't imagine that they know. Yeah, I mean, no, they probably do, it's retail. So Billy's in the back being berated by his shit heel manager, Andy, and Mr. Sims comes in the back and is like, Billy, do you want to play a game? can you be our Santa? Billy does it because working in retail is hell and you kind of just have to. I don't know if it was the same in the 80s, but... <laughs> So Billy's in the Santa suit now, and I think this actor did a pretty fucking good job of like looking like transformation time. I don't really know how to explain it. I just thought it was, um, I thought his visceral reactions to Santa and just Christmas time in general, the adult actor of Billy. Quite honestly, I thought it was a lot better than I was expecting. So Billy's being the toy store Santa and it's not at all fucking creepy as hell with this little girl. Oh my God. What's the matter with you? Please. Stop. Yes, please stop. At this time, Sister Margaret calls to talk to Billy while he's at work and Andy's like, he doesn't work in the storeroom anymore. He's the fucking Santa. And Sister Margaret's like, fuck. The workday is over and it is time to close and lock the doors and Mr. Sims declares it's time to get fucked up because it's the Christmas party. They're all drinking together and Mr. Sims asks Billy to keep up with him. And honestly, Billy, for not drinking, which was shown in the, the work montage, holds his alcohol really well. I don't know if it has to do with the probably insanely traumatic catatonic state he's in right now or if it was just like a, a missed thing in direction or whatever, but he is not drunk. Mr. Sims is very drunk and Mr. Sims comes over and talks to him and they have a conversation and it basically ends with Mr. Sims being like, haha, you're Santa, you gotta go, you gotta do Santa things, you better get started doing Santa things. But while they were having this conversation, Andy and Pamela, who are apparently together, which is disgusting, cause girl, you could do better, like he's 
not good looking and he's also a piece of shit. What are you doing? So Andy and Pamela are in the back and Pamela's asking him about her Christmas gift and he's all like, hey, hey, yeah, I, I got it back here for you, baby. And she's like, well, why didn't you just give it to me out there? Like, whatever, why did we have to be back here? And he's like, this isn't a gift you can share with everybody or everyone has to see or something like this. And it's like, it's his dick, Pamela. Turn around and leave, please. But she doesn't. Billy follows them into the back room and when Billy gets there, you can hear her being assaulted by Andy. While her assault is escalating, Billy's having a flashback to his uh, mother. The whole time I was like, Billy, Billy, fucking do something. He does something. He kills Andy. He hangs him with Christmas lights. Pamela is like, you're crazy, but I'm, I don't know, just my personal opinion I wouldn't call somebody crazy at that moment in time but she does and she like hits him and then he kills her this part of the movie just seems like one of those things that has to be done why would he kill her I thought he just like connected her being assaulted to his mother being assaulted I don't agree with it how the fuck am I gonna sit here and be like I don't agree with this crazy person who just fucking snapped and is killing people but I don't agree with it I think it was lame I think he should have knocked her ass out and left her for life I mean I guess you could make the argument that he killed her because he has sex fantasies about her and there's that yeah that's probably what it is I still hate it mr. Sims goes to the back to try to find out what that noise is he heard it was and gets a hammer to the face. Mrs. Randall is calling for Mr. Sims when all the lights turn off and all just the, like the little display things are on and going and she thinks it's charming because it's Christmas stuff. So she eventually goes to the back and finds Mr. Sims and is like, what? Oh shit. She runs to the phone and calls 911 but Billy axes the counter and she runs away again. While Billy is hunting for Miss Randall in the toy store, he's quoting "'Twas the night before Christmas." <laughs> Billy eventually kills her with an arrow to her torso. Billy leaves and shortly thereafter, Sister Margaret shows up and finds the bodies. Her scream that cuts to the nutcrackers is, I don't know, but I really fucking like that. I thought that was, I thought that was an interesting choice. This next scene I have questions about because it's a cut to two adult teenagers making out on a pool table and they're topless because they're gonna bang on the pool table. They're interrupted by what I'm assuming is the younger sister of the girl asking about like, can I stay up and see Santa? She's all like, no. Eventually the kid goes back in her room. The adult teenage woman girl is Denise. The adult teenage man boy is named Tommy and the little girl is named Cindy. Tommy and Denise are making out again. Denise hears jingling and believes it's her cat and she goes upstairs with her fucking tits out, which would not happen. If you are her, you're gonna put your shirt back on because you know full fucking well, Cindy is not in fucking bed. She is out there waiting for Santa. She's like your sister. Or if you're babysitting her, if you're babysitting her, it's worse to walk out to like outside with your top off. Like what? I can't even say it. I couldn't even get it out of my mouth. There is no way. Denise lets the cat in and of course, Billy's also there. I also don't understand why Billy's here because Billy has no connection to Tommy or Denise. It's just like one of those horror tropes where it's like the villain can sense that people are having sex within a hundred mile radius and will go and kill them. Some killings are random, but he has a specific purpose to punish people. How did he just know that they were in that house having sex? They didn't show us like a scene where he was like watching them and it would have taken nothing at all to connect them. Like Tommy could have been one of the kids from the orphanage or maybe even Denise and he knew like because maybe Tommy was like I'm hooking up with this girl Denise or maybe he had a crush on Denise too and he knew like blah 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 Tommy. Would have taken nothing to connect it and make it make sense because they connect all the other killings. I think they just wanted to put Denise on that mounted deer with her tits out because it's aesthetically slasher pleasing. So after the fairly loud thumping around murder of Denise right above Tommy's head, which he couldn't hear it because the radio was up too loud. Bitch, no, you, even if your radio is up too loud, you hear the shit above you. Like, Trust me, you fucking hear it. He eventually goes upstairs because he's like, D Denise isn't back yet, so I guess I should go check on her. It's been like 10 minutes or whatever. Billy and him have a fight. He bests Billy at first and goes to pick up the phone to dial the operator instead of 911. Was there no 911 in the 80s? Really though, I don't know. When did 911 happen? Billy's back for more and he's fighting Tommy again and eventually throws that motherfucker out a window. So Tommy's taken care of. Billy's trying to leave and Cindy's all like, Santa? And Billy's like, 
interrogating, have you been good all year, blah, 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 and is slowly pulling out a box cutter that he killed Pamela with earlier. And then Cindy's like, yeah, dude, I'm a good kid. And Billy gives her the box cutter with Pamela's blood still on it. And Cindy just accepts it and is like, okay. And then he leaves. That scene though, I was really like, I got nervous that he was gonna kill the little girl. Cause I was like, he's not gonna believe her or she's gonna be like, well, maybe one time I was bad and then he's gonna kill her. But he didn't and she didn't. Cindy knows what's up. Fake it till you make it, girl. I also wanna point out how that could open up for another movie because she would technically have like the same trauma, the same type of trauma, not exactly the same trauma that Billy had. Then we get like a scene showing two cops and showing that like the, the town sheriff people know that there is a killer on the loose that is dressed as Santa Claus. Sister Margaret has told them. The cops seem really casual about it. I'm not gonna lie. They're just kind of like, oh, well, and we're out looking for Santa Claus as if, I mean, you're looking for him because he just killed four people that you know of. At that time, they were only looking for him from the toy store. I mean, I guess cops are just nonchalant in that town when a quad homicide has taken place. I mean, at least be a little bit serious. I get gallows humor, but come on. Billy is now on the run in a forest area. And in this forest area, there are some unlucky teenagers. There are two boys that are sledding or are going to be sledding. And one of them's like, I swear to God, somebody's watching us. And the other one's like just a shit heel character. We're friends, but I'm such a smart ass. Look at me be smart ass and sarcastic. And I'm so funny because I'm taking the piss out of my other friend. But it turns out that Billy wasn't watching them. It was Bob and Mac that was watching them. The two adults that are fucking mean to teenagers. I mean, the also ad teenagers. <laughs> that are mean to other teenagers. But it turns out it's a sled jacking and Bob and Max steal their sleds. So clearly they were naughty. So we know what happens to people who are naughty. The blonde one, I don't know which one is which. So the blonde one goes down the hill on the sled first. The redhead one who is doing all of the bullying goes down the hill after the blonde one is at the end. And while he's going down the hill, Billy decapitates him. Fucking ridiculous. Slasher films are so ridiculous. So to me, like, that one makes sense because he was in the woods and he could have been overhearing the bullying and all that and would have done that. So that that one is one where you tie it in and you make it make sense. But it's daytime now and we're in the cop shop and Sister Margaret has fallen asleep in the waiting room. So a detective comes and wakes her up and they're talking about Billy and whatever and, and then Sister Margaret is like, oh no, he's gonna go to the orphanage. We have to warn them. And instead of instantly sending like cops over there, the fucking detective decides to start trying to call the orphanage to tell them to get like the kids inside and to be wary and whatever. You would dispatch people first. You're dealing with a spree killer and what you're gonna do is like make a nice friendly house call before you start dispatching. And before you say, well, they did it before he started calling. They did not. He was calling them. And then he was like, somebody's still on the phone or whatever. And Sister Margaret's like, I can't imagine who'd be on the phone for this long. And then they tell the cops to go out there. No, that's not, what? <laughs> so there is one cop that's close enough to the orphanage that he goes there by himself. And when he gets there, he sees a Santa approaching the kids that are all playing outside. And he's like, stop, don't go near those kids, back up. And the kids are like super like, oh my God, it's Santa. And then the police officer draws his guns and the kids are too busy being like, oh my God, it's Santa to worry about the fucking gun that that cop has pointed directly in their direction because the kids are here, Santa's here, and the cop is here. So the cop here is shooting towards Santa here and the kids are here. Are you fucking kidding me? Of course they would. So the cop shoots at Santa into this crowd of kids and only hits Santa. Sister Margaret and the other detective are driving to the orphanage and then they get the call over the thing and are like, uh, Santa's been shot at the orphanage. And then the guy gives the description of what the Santa man looked like. And it's not Billy, because of course it's not Billy, that's how movies work. But it's not, not only is it not Billy, it was Father O'Brien. The only reason Father O'Brien didn't respond to the cops, hey, stop, don't go near those kids, is because he was fucking deaf. I forgot to mention that after the cop shot Father O'Malley, one of the nuns just came out and was like, oh my god, kids, come back inside. The amount of downplaying the entire fact that their priest who was dressed up as Santa, just got murdered in front of a bunch of kids. 
the acting from here is fucking bizarre to me because like none of the kids are like freaking out about it they're just kind of like oh no just saw a man got murdered in front of us and um i mean okay now we're just sitting here no one's crying no one's screaming no one's no one panicked when the fucking cop shot him like four times in the back it's just that whole thing with the kids not reacting to it made me even more like, oh yeah, this is a movie from the 80s before acting was invented for kids, I guess. Also, it doesn't really bother the cop at all that he just murdered a fucking innocent man. <laughs> like, not shocking, but okay. But he's now inside and Mama Supps is giving him a tongue lashing about like murdering Father O'Brien in front of all of these kids and he's just kind of like, Gosh, ma'am, I guess I just didn't really mean to. Because, um, he has no fucking soul and cares not for other beings. I think maybe they should also look into that cop. Hmm. The cop tells Mother Superior that she shouldn't let anybody in here that shouldn't belong in here. And she's like, no one who doesn't belong in here will get in here. And then he leaves to go do rounds around the orphanage to make sure Billy isn't around it. Also, Billy's younger brother, Richard, is still there because Billy, although not looking it, is actually 18 years old and his younger brother is, I guess, 13 at that time? Or maybe 14? How the fuck old is that kid supposed to be? Because he looks like maybe 10. But to take these kids' minds off of the murder they just all witnessed, they decide to do Christmas chants. I mean, Christmas songs. Also, this fucking cop is a goddamn joke. <laughs> The cop sees that the shed basement door thingy is open, so he follows it down. He clears the basement, and when he's walking up from the cleared basement, the music is settling, and it's like, everything's fine. And then he gets an axe to the stomach from Billy, saying, PUNISH! His catchphrases, I guess, are punish and naughty. I think this was supposed to be a jump scare. Maybe? Maybe in the 80s it was a jump scare? I saw it a mile away. I don't know. I don't really get jump scared from slashers, which is bizarre, because I am so susceptible to jump scares. Then Billy's at the door and Andrew, that lovely little orphan, lets him directly in and Billy is there for mother, mama, subs. But here's the thing, when Billy comes in, he's not wearing the Santa beard. The Santa beard is here. You can see his whole face. So everyone knows it's Billy and he's only 18. So wouldn't those kids also know who Billy is? How come Richard didn't say Billy? How come there was no, these kids are just not real. They are not believable. I don't know. It really drags the rest of the film down for me. In the possible last moments of her life, Mother Superior tries all she can try to stop Billy from harming the children. Also forgot to mention that Mother Superior is now in a wheelchair because the easiest way to show that she grew older was to put her in a wheelchair. She sits there in her wheelchair, closes her eyes, and waits for her moment to meet her maker, but it doesn't come because Sister Margaret and the detective are there. And with Sister Margaret's helping hand, the detective shoots Billy to death in front of all those kids. So these kids have seen two different dressed up Santas that they all knew die in front of them in one day and they're all very chill about it. Billy gracefully did not hit any of the kids on his way down with the axe. Billy's last words are, You're safe now, Santa Claus is gone. And all the kids are still very silent and chill about like this moment because you know how kids are. Cool and even headed under intense pressure and terrifying situations. Richard, Billy's little brother, takes this silence to look at Mama Supps and say, Naughty. Okay, so welcome to the new part of this franchise review kind of uh, video thing that I want to do. This is the part where I tell you where I think the movie of the franchise in question belongs on this uh, ranking list right here. And also I watched the trailer after I watched the movie and I'm going to tell you guys if there's too much of the movie in the trailer. And for the slasher films, I'm gonna do specifically too many of like the kills. Okay, so I forgot the pins, but um, I have them now. Let's talk about where Silent Night, Deadly Night belongs on the list of rankings. I think it belongs at number one because I've not seen any of the other ones yet. So I can't even, this is easy, first one's the easiest one, right? So the trailer itself has half of the kills in the entire movie and 
more than half of Billy's entire kills. So to me, the trailer shows too much of the slasher part of the movie. But as far as story goes, it does nothing. It doesn't tell you any of the story. You're just shown all of the slasher moments. So my personal thing of would there be too much in the movie or too much in the trailer uh, would be a uh, no. But since we're, it's a slasher film and I said before that we're doing is there too much of the kills in the trailer it's a yes cool. so yeah uh thank you guys for watching this video um let me know if you've seen silent night deadly night in the comments or if you're going to watch it even though i spoiled the whole movie already i will see you guys in the next one and i hope you enjoyed like share subscribe all that goodness bye Billy. I get really heated. And when I get heated, you can tell as I get closer to the fucking camera. Uh.